Hey everyone, this is Tony Teaches Tech. I'm Tony, and in this video, I'm gonna show you how to do some basic load testing for your website with K6. So if that's something you're interested in learning how to do, let's get on into the tutorial here. Okay, so um, the first thing you're gonna do is to get K6, install it on your system, whatever that may be. I'm gonna be using Ubuntu version 20.04, as you can see up here. So let's go ahead and install that. The first thing we needed to do is tell Ubuntu that this package is available for install out there somewhere. So there's a couple commands we have to execute for that. And by the way, I'll have all these commands uh, down below linked in the description. So first one is uh, this apt key command. And once you have executed that, we want to go ahead and do a, an echo something like this. I have to use my cheat sheet over here to copy it. So it's a uh, echo. This is where the um, the binary lives for that installer, K6 installer. So we'll go ahead and add that to our sources list. And now that we have done that, uh, just to make sure that your system's up to date, do is apt get update. And then finally, after that is finished, we can do an app get install K6. So let's go ahead and finish up with that. And this is what will actually install K6 onto our system. All right, so that's about it for the installation is concerned. Let's go ahead and run an example. And K6, if you're working on the command line here in terminal, um, whether you're on Mac or Windows, doesn't matter, or on a remote server somewhere, you will be having to create some type of script, okay? And we'll start with the most basic, simple script example. So just create a file on your system called, um, let's just call it script.js. It's gonna be JavaScript code. Again, don't worry if you don't know anything about JavaScript or coding or anything like that. It, it, just kind of like see what we're doing here and then you can expand upon that. So we're importing, um, couple different libraries here from K6, and then this is our main function right here, okay? And all we're doing is going to this IP address and uh, making a request to it, and then waiting one second. So here is where you can customize what you want to test. So this is just like a default IP address. Um, for me, I have a website, a WordPress website that I just created here at this IP address, okay? And that's what I'm going to be testing today. So uh, I'm gonna copy that, and it doesn't have to be an IP address, okay? This can be anything like a domain name, um, it could be HTTP, HTTPS, anything like that. So whatever you're testing goes in here, the HTTP get. Um, okay, so let's go ahead and save that. And, um, I also want to pull up another terminal window here and SSH into that same IP address just so we can kind of monitor what's going on, if anything, on the other side. So you can do that with htop. Uh, that one is not found. So let's do. Let's go ahead and install that sudo apt get install htop. And that'll take uh, no time at all. All right, so this is all of our processes going on. The WordPress server, we can see our CPU usage, our memory usage. So uh, the goal here is as we run tests to the server, we can see the CPU usage and memory usage uh, maybe fluctuate a little bit. Okay, so we got our monitor on the left. We got our test server on the right. Let's go ahead and execute the script. So you can simply do that with K6 run script.js do that and it's going to run the test and we barely see anything happen over on the left hand side. Let's make this a little bit wider so we can see everything on one line. And um, you got lots of information here, lots of data to look through. We got, uh, and actually we won't go through all of these. The one that we care about the most actually in my opinion is HTTP request duration. And this is how long basically from the time that the request was sent until you receive the response back um, that you're waiting. And because this was just one test based on the code that we ran, um, this is the average or the actual amount of time that it took for that test. So 24.77 milliseconds. Now, what if you wanted to run that test multiple times to simulate like multiple users going to your website. Well, we can pass in a couple arguments to that same command that we just ran. So instead of k6 run script, we can do k6 run dash dash v u, a v yeah, 
dash dash vus 10 dash dash duration 30 seconds and what this is going to do is uh, vus is virtual users it's going to you know simulate 10 users coming to your website at a time for the duration of 30 seconds so those 10 users are basically you're, you're not going to have any more than 10 at, at most 10 users coming to your website and they're just going to keep making your requests like once they receive the request then they're going to make another request and then repeat that so on and so forth for the duration of 30 seconds so let's go ahead and run that and see what happens over on the left hand side with our monitor so it's going to run the same type of thing this time it's going to take 30 seconds and you can see the cpu usage moving around the memory usage kind of hanging steady there not too much action going on but we see all these www data processes that's um, these 10 requests being sent out and actually the mysql processes too because this is a wordpress website it has to go uh, gather all that information from the wordpress um, database mysql in this case and send it back to php and all that stuff so um, that looks good so we got the results of our test done here now we see the average time that it took for those you know how many tests did it did it did 283 tests in those 30 seconds so um, and on average it took 30 wait no, no 82 milliseconds this time so um, it went up because there is more of a demand on the server um, 10 users at a time at any given time making requests to the website so um, cool so that's those are you know kind of two basic examples with load testing with k6 if you're interested we'll do a, uh, a more complex example with uh, load testing so i'm going to use my cheat sheet again over here and we're going to modify our script that we had created so let's go ahead and open that up again and by the way if you don't know uh, how to use vim or a text editor i'll have a video for you about how to do that so let's edit the script.javascript file and we're just gonna kind of like scrap this and start from start from scratch okay and i'll paste in the code here a few more lines of code, but still nothing too extreme. Um, the first thing I want to do before I forget is to change this to the test URL that we want to test out. So what was that URL? That was, and we can look over here, it was HTTP, I forget if it's an S or not. Uh, it's not secure. So HTTP colon slash slash 45.79.227.227. And we'll throw on the slash there. Okay, so let's go through this code. Again, we're just importing some, some K6 packages here. And this is what um, is going to simulate a an increasing demand on the server, and then it's gonna plateau, and then it's gonna decrease back down to no demand. So basically, for, for 15 seconds, we're gonna try to slowly but surely increase the amount of users hitting the website to 100. So we're going to start at zero seconds and there's going to be zero users on the website. And then by 15 seconds into the test, there's going to be 100 users on the uh, making a request to the server. Then for the next 30 seconds, we're going to maintain 100 users constantly, at most constantly uh, making requests to the server. And then at the end of those 30 seconds, we're gonna slowly but surely again, uh, go from 100 users making the server, making requests to the server down to zero users making requests to the server. And that's gonna be over the course of those 15 seconds. So in total, 15 plus 30 plus 15, that's a 60 second test. And um, let's go ahead and run that. So let's save it. And instead of passing arguments, we'll just do K6 run script. And that's gonna execute all that code that we just created. So let's do that and monitor the left-hand side here. Oops, unexpected character. Okay, so that is this first one. We don't want that comment here. So sorry if you copied that from me, but we don't need that. Okay, K6 run script. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. And now, like I said, this is going to be 30 or 60 second test. And over here on the, well, monitor the CPU usage going up over here on the left and we can see 
since we're in the first 15 seconds of the test, we're slowly but surely increasing to 100 virtual users. We are at 100 virtual users. Now we are, for the next 30 seconds, going to consistently maintain making 100, having 100 users make those requests for the next 30 seconds. So um, CPU usage is almost spike into 100% here and there. The memory usage is very close to maxed out. We are 700 out of, so maybe like three quarters of the way there, and lots and lots of WWW data processes. Um, and I'm sure if we scroll down, we'll see all the MySQL processes too. Um, lots, of, lots of stuff going on over here on the left-hand side. So we are in the last 10, five seconds of the test. That means we're slowly, um, reducing the number of virtual users on the server. And now we are done. So this time, let's look at the results here. We did 2,418 tests over the course of those, those 60 seconds. And let's look at the HTTP request duration, this time 895 milliseconds. So close to, um, on average, one second, each of those virtual users had to wait for their request to be fulfilled from the server. So as you can see, the demand on the server has caused the server to slow down in the time that it's able to uh, fulfill those requests. Um, definitely a lot more than you can do with K6 than what we've seen here. They actually have a whole like um, web interface that you can uh, pay for. Um, like this is all free. This is free and open source. You can do whatever you want locally with on your servers as far as load testing. Um, and then they have extensive documentation for that, which is great. And that's, that's I encourage you to take full advantage of that. But um, if you want something simple, click and like, instead of writing code, kind of like drag and drop, um, then they have that available for you too. So something else to consider. I hope you have a better idea about how to do load testing for your website. Again, very basic examples, but it should get you started in the direction of being able to do that um, from here on into the future. So if you like this video, give it a thumbs up. If you wanna see more from me, then definitely consider subscribing to this channel. And if you do, I'll see you in the next one.